not sure if I'm streaming right now. Am I streaming? Oh, yay, I think I'm, I'm streaming. Okay, pause this. Uh, I'm just gonna type in Slack. Also going to be. I don't know if anyone's going to be around or awake for the next half hour, but I'm going to share a Zoom link on Slack. So I tested out um, having a Zoom open at the same time as a Twitch stream was going on like a few months ago. And then I lost interest in Twitch streaming. So here we are again. <laughs> um, I don't know if my audio is actually... Okay, so I need to have the Zoom audio open. Um, I'm tempted to... I mean, I think the microphone should be sh I show you audio capture, but I'm not entirely sure um, whether it should be that for both of them or just one of them. So we'll see. Okay, actually it looks like it's not capturing my audio at all. So let me change it back to that. And maybe the output would have to be um, I show you audio capture. Hmm. But yeah, we can't test for sure unless somebody joins and I hear their voice on the call. Um, anyway, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going to be, let's see, like, um, here's the newsletter draft. This is the Django site, as you can see. Um, Bill did a really good job documenting or like ho hooking it up with Docker and documenting exactly how you set everything up. Um, and Bethany and Chris 48S worked extensively on tests, um, which I think is still a work in progress, but I'm really happy now that we can run these two commands to um, get the Python tests compiled. Uh, so I have, um, I guess, one quick note for new people uh, who are interested in this Django project, which uh, runs our API for um, our new Code Buddies work in progress site, which is ta -da, kind of what it looks like right now. Um, oh, sorry, the note. I wanted to make was it's pretty easy um, to set up if you have docker you clone this repo well you fork this repo clone it uh, cd into it run docker compose up um, and you should get localhost 8000 which is super awesome and then when you want to tear down the environment you just do docker compose down um, so right now i'm creating a new username let's just call this like uh, I am, I think, in the master branch for the front-end project. Um, oh, never mind, I am in issue 64. <laughs> Let me... I don't remember what issue 64 was all about. Let me double-check. Because there was a pull request that um, was merged in last week, I think. Which... Ah, uh, here we go. Wait, is this... Is this accurate at all? Where is the... Um, authentication pull request that I worked on. <coughs> ah, 
here we go, create sign up and logged in pages. It looks like this was merged six days ago. And then I see these closed pull requests are not in order, so I was confused by that. Um, I guess we sort by most recently updated. Here we go. Yeah, so this was pull request number 65, but I'm trying to remember if, oh yeah, it was issue 64. So that means I can actually delete the issue 64 branch since the PR was merged. Um, oh, never mind. <laughs> Angelo deleted it six days ago. Uh, it's just still my logo for some reason. Um, so I'm going to check out master and then do a git pull of the latest for master. Yay. Um, okay, so now I can create a new user. Linda2334. Oh, that's going to be hard to remember. The password is just going to be password for now. Um, so right now if I, I can, I'm logged in, uh, Linda2334, password, and I'm able to log in. Um, so the priority issue for the backend right now, um, well, Bethany and Chris have been working on tests, but uh, the priority issue after that is to um, get reset password and validation working so that when I register a new user, I have to go into my email inbox and um, click to confirm that I actually own this email address that I registered with before I can you know, get into my account because we don't want people creating accounts for that are email addresses that they don't own. Um, cool. So anyway, uh, so I'm now in my profile. These are just kind of like uh, things that are, you know, idealistic, but we haven't really done any work for. The We're still on the resources part. Um, one thing for the front end is that these resources are coming from uh, the db.json file, which is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, kind of like a, I think this came from a dump of fixtures or something. Um, but we want to you be using the resources that are from, you know, our locally running copy of um, the Django app. That's, you know, where we're getting our API from. Because um, some of these, uh, I think these fields have updated. Uh, so I think I'm going to, yeah, maybe make a quick PR to update this get request assuming that I have, um, I'm remembering things correctly. Oh, I wonder if there's any, like, I'm just going to listen to see if there's any feedback in audio from. Okay, good. So it looks like I am, although I'm like talking to Zoom, uh, I'm not hearing like my voice twice. That's good. Okay, so huh, it's I'm not sure if I should delete the db.json file now. Maybe maybe not yet. Um, but let's take a look in resources. So we have oh, interesting. It's getting from localhost three thousand and one slash resources. Um, I kind of, okay, let's do a console.log response here, or responsive data, I guess. <coughs> um, I, th I think what's happening is localhost 3001 points to the db.json. Uh, I don't know if we actually have evidence of that somewhere. Oh, hmm. Or if it's just like a factor, or sorry, something that's assumed with db.json. Oh, I think it is. It means this means that we're running a server at local 2001 that you know gives us the db.json data. Um, interesting. Okay, so 
in our resources uh, file, but I'm probably just going to hopefully this works. Uh, resources, we have a proxy linking to localhost 8000, so if I update that, then resources should just point to the 8000 file. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'm not getting anything here. Uh, and let's see what response gives us. Interesting. Okay, well, this is a brand new database, so maybe there aren't any resources. Okay, never mind. There are quite a lot of resources here. Uh, let me think. So I'm creating. Oh, oops. That was just a test to see um, what would happen if I created a resource with an emoji yes tag, which we are, uh, for the record, going to validate against. Um, yeah, so I'm going to create another resource under the tag JavaScript. And then, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm also going to double check that when we're creating new users, we're pointing them to, okay, off slash users, which is working. So that means we can leave off the localhost 8000 um, to create new users. So the other thing is double checking that the endpoint is correct. Oh, maybe we need to get it from API v1 resources. <coughs> so let's try that. Uh, let's see. It says 401 unauthorized. Okay, well, I don't remember if I was getting that previously also. Oh, it says it's getting it from local 3000. Darn it. Uh, let's see. So the other thing, um, just to double check things, is that we... I uh, wonder if I should restart um, Docker and then you know, just to make sure that the proxy is working. So docker compose down, I think this is the command, right? Docker compose down. Remember if there's like a f another flag that I need in here. Here we go. Okay, so docker compose down. Oh, uh, I don't even know if this issue that I was thinking of working on actually has a issue, um, which was to you know get a list of products. Sorry, not a list of products, a list of resources um, from our database instead of db.json. Okay, uh, first. I'm going to try to do this, and then if uh, file the issue, if you know if it actually works. Okay, so yay! It looks like um, well, our front end is definitely not running, and our back end is also not running. So let me rerun the back end. I don't remember if I needed to rerun it with dash build <coughs> excuse me Co uh, compose up dash oh what does dash d do I don't remember okay so yay is running with our backend app now. And then let me just rerun the frontend app. npm run start. Okay. So far, so good, except it's still. Huh. hooking up to localhost 3000 instead of 8000. I mean, technically I could do this. 
see what happens. Okay, maybe you need to not have a CTP or something. Okay, it still says unauthorized, which, you know, may be a good thing because. <coughs> Awesome. Authentication details were not private provided. That's awesome. So let me double check Postman. Um, when we create a resource, this is the body that we're passing in. And authentication says inherent off from parent, which means that. OK, so parent, I think, if I remember correctly, is somewhere here. So it's the bearer token. So we're passing in a token. Um, so I have to look up. Well, first I need to get the token from um, uh, local storage, which, if I remember correctly, we uh, um, put into local storage uh, in various other components in this app. So let me just search for local storage. Here we go. I think what we're doing now is um, passing it down from, <coughs> from like a more global context. So this provider makes it available in all of these different paths. I wonder if resources, okay included. So we just need to do a um, use a hook, I think, to get access to the um, to off tokens. And another way we can I think check we have tokens. Okay, cool. So uh, in our local storage, we have a token object. Um, if we have anything else in here. Uh, it's so hard to <laughs> see what's in here. Okay, we also have username and cool. So let me think. Uh, we use a use. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the hook that we need. I think there's an example here. Um, Use context off context, and then we can have access, and then we can access off context dot <coughs> off token. Um, cool. So let me let me do that. Uh, let's see. We have to import off con context in our. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to <laughs> try to work from this uh, in a branch. I'm going to like randomly create a new issue. Um, let's call this like get resources from from the Django API. Don't rely on db.json. I mean, db.json was really. Um, useful, but it's like, as we've been working on the Django app and updating it slightly, it's getting outdated. So I think right now in general, it's good to just have both the Django API running alongside the um, uh, front end app, which is of course built in React. Okay. So context is um, right now the resources page on see, I'm just going to link to our Netlify um, cool. is consuming from <coughs> a db.json file. We'd like to, uh, let's have it consume from a local version of localhost. Uh, 
What's that? Yay. So the acceptance criteria is... Uh, well, I mean, I can sort of, I guess, write out my steps. Um, get token from off context. Uh, what else? Um, oh, I just realized get is under a token, but it shouldn't be. Um, because we do want people who are not necessarily logged in to be able to see all the resources. It's just getting the resources that, or sorry, creating a new resource that shouldn't be under the token. Okay, so I'll actually file a ticket on the Django side to open up that, um, that request. Uh, in the meantime, I'm kind of wondering if I should continue with this. Uh, yeah, you know what? <laughs> Sorry, I'm changing my mind so many times. Um, I think, okay, I'll, I'm going to continue filing this, but um, to get this working, I'll have to obviously pass in the, um, the user's authentication token, but I think I might wait to merge this in until, you know, I won't need the authentication token anymore. So my acceptance criteria is just going to be like, um, get a list of resources from localhost 3000 and yeah oh man <laughs> I, I'm feeling a little bit stressed because I'm writing an issue on a live stream but um, let me think Yeah, let's let's just keep this for now. <coughs> and I'm going to try to implement, as I said, with the token, which will be helpful when I'm implementing the um, or like updating the create resource, uh, because that'll have to feed in. I mean, I'm going to have to be implementing the same thing there. Um, cool. So, axios that get from API VA one resources. <coughs> so next step is to Google. Oh, right. I was going to create a new branch for this. Um, yeah, I really didn't change much. So I'm going to stash this to get check out B for the issue I just created. Uh, 101. I can't believe there are so many issues already also nearing my bedtime. Okay. Uh, yay. So I'm now in this branch. I'm going to Google Axios. Well, first I need to get the authentication token. So um, I was kind of copying what I did before with nav. I need to get off the token, um, and then I need to use it. So, off context. Uh, use it as a hook. Um, make sure I import use context, and then I am going to. Uh, I mean, I think I, if I console log off context here, then the off token tokens, I don't remember the exact spelling. Hold on. Uh, where is, oh, I think it's an app.js, sorry. Off tokens. Yay. Okay, so that's that's the name of my uh, variable. Off tokens. Then that should give me, you know, that dot that data object with with all my tokens, if fingers crossed. Um, let's refresh. Ooh, that's production. I don't want production. 
want local. Yay! It works. Okay, so. Uh, oh, what happened here? Did did it work? I'm confused. Uh, I thought <coughs> I was still getting uh, the resources from db.json, or I, I I thought that the 401 should still be running here. Um, yeah, this is confusing. Okay, there's kind of accessibility error there. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm I'm confused. So all I did was get the context if I like you know console all of this out. Uh, what happens? Let's see. Okay, I don't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it shouldn't have been something to do with. Hmm. Oh, well, duh. That's the reason. I forgot to get slash pop. Um, so, sorry, that was a silly mistake. Okay. So get resources unauthorized because um, authentication credentials were not provided. So let me look up how to get authorization. Um, Yay! Hopefully this blog post will give us something. Uh, let's see. Heathers, right. You just pass it into Heathers. Authorization basic token. Is that really what I need? <coughs> <coughs> yeah, let's, let's try this. <laughs> see if it works. Um, hold on. Okay, so URL comma uh and it's just an object right so uh basic so the token would be let's see off context oh it should be that token Okay, uh, let's see what happens. So let's refresh and see what happens. It's still at 3000, so let's make this localhost 8000. Okay. Interesting. Invalid username slash password. Why would it give me that? Oh, is it looking for a username and password instead of a token? Interesting. Um, yeah, I wonder how my Postman setup looked like. So bearer token. So, um, Axios bearer token. Authorization is bearer. Hmm. Interesting. Error token? Maybe that's what I need. I have no idea at this point. Let's try this again. Resources.map is not a function. Why? Wait, 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 wait. That's a different error. Did, did it work? Oh, did it? It, it worked. Yeah, Linda T. Sure. That's me. And then I'm able to get some results. Yay. Okay, cool. So I just needed to change this from basic to bearer. That's funny. Uh, so my response is 
Yeah, let's see what my response is. Because I'm not sure if I needed to do like response.data. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, response.data makes sense. Okay, cool. So, so that's resources and then resources.map. <coughs> Okay, so let's see. Resources that map resource, and then we're turning all of the resources in uh, in the resource card. Why is resources that map not a not a function? <laughs> That's interesting. Um, let me see. Is it because some of the things I'm returning are not available? Hmm. Oh, I removed the causal log, which I think I actually want. Actually, let me just causal log the response to the data here again. Uh, yeah. So, oh, I have to do resources dot results dot map. Or rather, just you know, set it to results because that's the object. Yay! Interesting. I love all these um, yeah, all these names. That's hilarious. Intelligent with a keyboard. Okay, because these are all <coughs> obviously created in Postman. Um, let me think. So whenever I create a resource in Postman, <coughs> I'm getting the title. Um, yeah, I think what's probably happening is, uh, well, I mean, okay, this is fine for now. Uh, I think we can probably update the collection, um, which is hosted in, let's see, backend. Postman, yay, we can probably update this so that uh, here's our resources. Like when we create a resource, we're passing in a couple more fields. Um, right. But otherwise, it, I'm pretty happy with this. It looks like, uh, like, yeah, if we get a resource, um, Here we go. We can also pass in media type, paid, tags, etc. Oh, that's why the description is empty for a lot of these. So if we like just pass in a description, it'll automatically look slightly better. Description. Um, yeah, we can do like random sort of random texts, the postman thing. Okay, that was a complete guess, but oh, <laughs> yeah, it might not be a postman. It's just random. Okay, well, whatever. Um, I think in my local holes, I'll just be seeing some random stuff here. Okay, so the other thing. Yeah, this is super basic because now I'm just realizing we need like pagination, which I don't know if, uh, I don't even know if Django DRF gives, I think it gives us that for free. I uh, haven't looked at the docs recently. Um, and then, oh, yay, this is undefined. So we have to fix. Oh, I think what's happening is a lot of we might have updated everything to have slugs. Um, or I don't know if that's actually for tags specifically. But okay, sorry, I'm just gonna double check what we had before. Um, so each resource had an ID, title. Yeah, we could just have 
them linking to the ID itself instead of um, a slug. Which, you know, I wouldn't really mind. Or we could like try to turn, um, let's see, in our resources, I'm just gonna double check how we actually implemented our, oh, it's resources ID, okay, cool. Uh, let's see, resource page, hmm. Link to resources slash ID. Okay, so ID is. Oh, it should not be undefined actually. <coughs> so we're getting the ID type. Oh, I see, I see, I see. It's not the ID anymore. It's called the GUID. Okay. So I think that should work now. Um, I just need to like update everything here and the GUID is technically a string not a number so I'm updating that as well okay and then well we don't have anything in our resource page oh I see it's still consuming from the old URL um, I'm not sure if this should be like a GUID instead of an ID. Let me just double check here. You know what? I think we, I mean, I'm tempted to make this more accurate. Uh, params dot GUID, I think. And then I might just have to also look close at 8000 it. Hmm. Oh, API v1 resources. I think it's the full path. Okay, so what is wrong? 401. Oh, darn it. You know, I rookie mistake because I forgot to pass in the uh, headers here. Uh, let's see. Get and then comma heathers oh and I have to uh, make sure I'm using the context here as well rather consuming from the context I think I can remove this console log okay cool uh, use context And yay! Well, that was a that was an update. Um, cool. I think I need to play with the API a bit more to figure out how we can <coughs> get like a variable number of uh, resources. But at least this was a. Hopefully, helpful update. So we're not, you know, using static data. The only thing that I'm kind of annoyed by is, uh, looks like I still have to keep this eight thousand thing in. Um, and another question I have is like, how will we push this to production? Like, obviously, it could look something like this, but our host name might also be like api.cobodies.org because um, yeah I guess it, it depends on like how we host our Django API but oh, I, I just I wish this worked for us right now in our um, yeah wait did it was that just the cache or did it actually work? Huh. Each child should have a unique prop, right? Uh, Q 
key is resource.id. Oh, it should be resource.gui.id, I think. <coughs> Invalid DOM property. Did I have a class here somewhere? Where is this? Uh, PG class. Yeah, the annoying thing about React error sometimes is you kind of don't know which file it's coming from. Okay, I think I'm going to remove all my console logs and make a commit and, oh my gosh, it's past my bedtime. Uh, console.log. If I can, like, throw this up as a pull request. Um, and then I need to also file a Django issue about making the um, get for resources um, public. So actually, let me let me do that right now. I'm gonna make a uh, API issue make um, the get resource is this endpoint public. So context is that right now we on the front end we need to call uh, or rather pass in an authorization header. <laughs> We need to i.e. the user needs to be in before they can uh, see a list products Should be true for when users are creating a why is it product resource? Uh, the resource, but um, the list of products should be public. Um, and I'm going to think even link to the cd something notify slash resources just for clarity list of resources on and the reason i keep on saying products is because i've been working in coases where i'm just talking about products all the time not resources um so acceptance criteria first uh Make sure, yeah, <laughs> I, uh, kind of embarrassed, I really don't know, like, I mean, I assume this is easy to do, but like, make, um, get resources not protected by authorization or something. <coughs> like, I want to say this is like, easy and Zira, but I have no idea. Okay, anyway. Uh, yeah, so that's my issue for the backend. And I think we can, I'm just gonna like make a PR for, for the front end stuff. Okay, I'm removing console logs, updating it to be GUID. Uh, I think this sh is okay. We'll like commit it as um, updated resources and resource 
page to consume from the Django localhost API instead of the db.json localhost 2001 endpoint, which is outdated. Cool. And then I'll just file a quick PR from this and link to the Django issue I filed. Um, update uh, resources and points to consume from Django API. Okay, so I am totally guilty of like kind of not following all of these template things. Uh, feels more like a refactor. Um, oh, I, I mean, I do like this layout. So the description is updated. Um, the resources, resources listing and single resource page to consume from running Jinko API app. So related tickets and documents. Um, oh, where's my... An authorization token. Uh, by the way, I, if anyone knows the difference between a basic and bearer token, let me know. Uh, order to see if they got access, get request to. Um, or just in order to see a listing of resources, but we should make that public. Only create should be productive. Before and after. Yeah, there really hasn't been that much like UI changes. Um, so I feel like can leave this off for now. Oh my gosh. Or we can like before, you know, to make it like obvious. Um, okay. <coughs> and in terms of reviewers, I'll just probably tag like Kobody's front end. And yeah, that's a quick PR <laughs> before bed. So thanks for watching. Hope this was slightly helpful. Obviously, there's like not too much code in our React app right now. Um, but it's a good exercise to have the, you know, the DB app running and postman running and to see like what we can do. All right, I'll try to uh, Twitch stream more often and like see how the video and audio quality is here. But yeah, until next time.